hairs on my body started standing on end. Silence. Nothing there. I fought to get back into my body. You are going to be a vital importance of helping us convince the masses. Type 471. Type 471. Bridge to the other world. Bridge to the other world. Welcome to Type 471. I'm Sam Kitchen. My guest today is Olga Galactic Traveler. Her website is galactictraveler.space. Now, Olga is a is a leader, a spiritual leader, right here in the Mount Shasta area. She's an, a very interesting person. There's a, there's a lot to discuss with Olga, so I'll just get right into it with her. Olga Galactic Traveler, welcome to Type 471. How are you today? I'm greeting Sam and greeting uh, Type 471. I'm so thrilled to be in your program today. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you today. It's a pleasure to speak with you. I, I always have fun talking to you because you're a very interesting <laughs> person. Now, first of all, you uh, on, on the property where you have your business, Galactic Traveler, you have what, what you say is the world's largest mandala. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, but before that, I feel like I'm predicting there are some listeners start uh, questioning and like wondering about, for example, the sound of my voice and most importantly about the accent, right? Uh, so I tell right away I'm Russian, full-time Russian blooded shamanic practitioner, also full-time guide, spiritual guide here on the mountain. My story, personal story, it's way longer when the show itself. So maybe I will leave it for another time. And um, we will definitely dive in through this journey together today. That's what I do. I take people on a journey physically and, and also subconsciously and mentally. So it's a cohesive experience. And in a way, yes, I have some physical devices. Also, as I see myself as a temple, as, yes, I have physical devices, which I will mention in a moment, but in a way I am myself as a sacred space. My voice, my presence, my attention, and everything I do have a certain spiritual meaning, like a ceremony, like a ritual. And many people definitely had good benefits by being in my presence so sending all the beautiful energy to everyone right now <laughs> that's excellent and and i'm glad you brought that up i was actually going to ask you about your own background and yes if i i'm glad you mentioned that that you're russian and i uh i i know that you said that your personal story is uh you know quite long and and quite oh, yes. quite detailed and complex um, but but nonetheless, do you think you could share some points with us about your background and, and about your journey to this point? Yes, there is a like a concept exists. We are right now transmitting both of us located in the most powerful place on Earth, Mount Shasta area, Mount Shasta, a live volcano. So there is a certain like a concept exists. It's called Mount Shasta calling. Some people come here one way or another, but it's always one like energy. People just come here and I say, why are you here? Because Mao Shasta calling you, the mother calling you back home. We are here being called and brought from different faraway places to be hold space here on Vulcano, on Mao Shasta. So my story is very mystical story. When I see the picture of Mount Shasta, I tell myself I need to be there. So almost like almost same day, I come sit on my car and I drive all the way from Los Angeles to Mount Shasta. And since that night, my life changed 360 degrees, maybe for 471 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clever. I like that. It's a spiritual call, back home, returning home, 
finding yourself, finding your true self and true voice. Yeah. Likewise, I was also called to this area. It's that's what this mountain does. It calls people to it, doesn't it, Olga? Yes. I even say Mount Shasta calling. It's like a not just words. It's a certain type of uh, like a hashtag Mount Shasta calling. Maybe it's like a sickness for some people. Maybe it's a spiritual call. Maybe it's voice from inside within. It's all of that. It's Marshasta Colin. There are a number of things that you've mentioned that I want to talk more about. I'm very interested in, but but first first things first. Let's let's start with the mandala, may we? Yes, I think uh, this is the good time. Okay, yeah. So, uh, how did the mandala come to be? Well, mandala is. Uh, um, I will share a few things today, but I think it take more time, like a lifetime, to really understand. Mandala is the biggest medicine wheel on earth. Or mandala is like the biggest. We don't even, we don't call medicine wheel. We call it mandala, as appropriate way. In a way, it's a huge circle, visible from cosmos, from satellite, and everything uh, on mandala is been measured by the inch to the point of perfection. It's based on the cosmic sacred geometry, based on the Fibonacci frequency and golden ratio. Ah. In a way, it's a it's a private land. It's a private gated land. But design of mandala, the concept and the idea behind this is beyond just one person or like official land owner. It's mandala um, exists because perhaps Mother Earth decided on that. In, because for one person's mind, we have not enough capacity. But if the spirit entering person mind, person body, person uh, attention, everything is possible, including to make that mandala. Different, definitely behind that a lot of work, physical work, masculine work, tractor and hands and feet. But uh, also, as I entered the mandala six years ago, as a feminine uh, representative, now mandala changed even more as a um, blueprint of very powerful energy go back inside the earth and shooting up to the stars. So it's just a slice what we can see on the map, but it's way more deeper than that. It's definitely take time to feel the depthness without overwhelming. For example, all the sacred geometry based on the different uh, polar energies like feminine and masculine energy. It's nothing to do with the physical bodies, but still me being a, as a woman, woman priestess, a shamanic priestess, with my presence and my management, spiritual management of mandala, I think now it's elevated even more, especially right now we enter already this age of uh, feminine power, feminine empowerment all around the world. So I just add that to our conversation also to celebrate feminine power. And doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, we all have that. But being a woman, being an international woman, I think uh, it's a wonderful way right now to open up your voice and uh, present, present the wisdom in a good way. Certainly. And I'm, I'm very glad you said that. It is certainly a time of feminine empowerment. And, uh, but it is very important to understand that gender is not the beginning or end of the story. All people, male, female, or of any gender, we all embody the masculine and the feminine. So when when we embrace both the masculine and the feminine within ourselves, we are embracing yes. the wholeness of ourselves. Yes. Thank you, Sam. You keep, keep the good word, uh, gender. Yes. Beyond gender, beyond this old uh, approach of how men and women should com communicate. Mandala is the message for the five dimensional earth in higher. Mandala help us to move from the old limiting mind and see everything on the 
many people talk about new age, a golden age, something like new earth is already here and it's very strong you can experience by being on mandala. Yeah, and just out of curiosity, would you say, would, is it fair to say that the mandala is a three-dimensional representation of a multi-dimensional construct? We can say so, three-dimensional, um, by visible from the cosmos, from satellite, from the map, that's what you mean? Right, three-dimensional as it's represented in the material universe, or at least in the three-dimensional plane, but uh, representative of a construct that is more beyond. dimensional than, beyond that, correct, yeah. Yes, and this is what Mandala teaching us, and probably conversation what we're going to have ahead. Uh, explore the world beyond just your two eyes, two feet, and two hands, and that's it, what it is, because we now we feel it, we understand there is more in everything, in everything. Right. Well said. I like that. I like talking to you, Olga. You, uh, you're, you're very <laughs> insightful. You, you, and, and you're very concise and and well thought in, in in the in the things that you say. I I enjoy that and I appreciate it. Now, I wanted to ask you more about shamanism, about your shamanic background. I find it very fascinating. First of all, are, do you adhere to, or are you trained in the, the the ways of Russian shamanism specifically? In a way, we can call that way, yes. Uh, being here, living in America, I never connected with this modern, uh, modern, I can say modern way. And uh, by developing who I am, in order to get that uh, practice, that wisdom, that knowledge, I have to be strong. I have to be very strong inside. So it took me a lot of years, all my life, to get to the point where I can really get it and understand that wisdom. Wisdom is already on in me. I born with that. It's coming from ancestors, but also from this, I call it narrow net. It's a fields of the wisdom is already existed. So sometimes we lost ancestors because we've been killed maybe in the, historically, we've been erased because it's too powerful. Very little to none information is left. Only few places in Mongolia, in Siberia. But there is available wisdom beside uh, like a memory, soul memory, still available through DNA, through the blood, through Ida's people teachings. And right now I see myself as a fully embodiment of that wisdom in like I like to use the word in a good way, in a good, good way. And now I, I'm all, I'm a master, I'm a teacher, but I'm student at the same time. I always enjoy from the ocean, go to the river, to the river, go to the spring, and to the spring, find one drop and uh, understand everything again. And then from one drop, I can expand back to the ocean and back and forward. Like a, like a lens on camera, zoom in and zoom out all the time. It's the most wonderful way to live. Yeah, and I can relate to what you've said, and I really appreciate it in a number of ways. First of all, it sounds like you're talking about kind of uh, just allowing your consciousness to just connect with the elements in, 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 the, in the way that all, all existence is one and, and, and the elements... The water is is just a manifestation of consciousness, and you can allow the water to take your consciousness wherever you see fit, wherever you choose for it to go. Would you would you say that's a fair way of describing it? Yes, it's more than fair way. It's absolutely amazing way. Great. Uh, also, uh, I I identify with what you've said in that I was also I came into this yes. world with um, a certain amount of awareness, and I know that some of that awareness comes from uh, my experiences in past incarnations. W would you say the same? Do you feel that that your uh, that, that the wisdom, the knowledge that you were born with? I know you mentioned DNA and uh, genetic memory. Yes. Uh, do you yes. feel do you feel that some of your insight comes from past incarnations as well? Yes, it's in a way. Yes, everything is. We have physical ancestry. Yes, like from one like from one country, or like one type of uh, blood. But 
I believe there is more than just ancestry by mothers and fathers. The soul can be in different in different places, in different dimensions or galaxies or different countries. Keep it simple too. Sometimes I think uh, if someone, ex if everyone on earth remember past life, there won't be any uh, wars or struggles or sufferings because then we will remember who we are. But uh, it's okay, one step at a time. Very true, yeah. And uh, we definitely need to be patient. <laughs> that is, that patient, is, yes. Mm -hmm. It's very true. But, mm -hmm. but for us to not remember also has its own purpose. We, we, we don't remember our past incarnations much of the time because that's, that's kind of part of the, the deal. Like we're only, we're, we're, we have the benefit of our past experience. And yet at the same time, this experience is like a whole new experience unto itself. So it's kind of a, it, it's, it's a balancing of, of the two. And, and when you're ready for yes. the, the information yes. to come uh, mm -hmm. about your previous incarnations, then then it can be accessed. Access, and uh, we can tie this back to this uh, shamanic way or whatever any spiritual way. We can tie it back when it's time. You don't need to like lay a study is good, but people sometimes uh, study something to become someone it's a traditional way conventional but i believe there is a way is in you on in us already all you need to do like and remember and you become that instantly in a way like almost not overnight but instantly you start embodying it, that wisdom that practices that who you really are and this is wonderful most exciting like enlightenment in a way, enlightenment, but I uh, never stop. It's not the end. It's just a beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keep it humble. Always keep it humble. Right. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more. When we're humble, when we embrace humility, we realize mm -hmm. that we are evolving and that there is so much more <laughs> yes. that we don't know mm -hmm. than what we do know. And it, it helps us to keep things in perspective. Yes, Sam, I've been thinking, preparing myself for today's broadcast and like uh, it's so complex, like our existence, like we, the one thread you start pulling and more and more to come, like it's always have to be like a choice, which, which thread, which line to pull so you can see expansion because there is so much, so much and you're doing so amazing by sharing the people uh, through your podcast about what else out there in in the most sweet innocent way how i see it it's amazing it's so refreshing oh well thank you that's quite a compliment olga i really appreciate that and likewise i i find you very refresh refreshing because you have such a unique and and well thought out insight it's it's very refreshing indeed and uh yes i also been thinking like which side i am because maybe some of your guests is like a full-time researcher uh full-time like followers of the bigfoot and like where olga is and perhaps today i'm representing that people not fully like uh, who don't believe completely in what we exist but i think i am on the middle of the bridge where i very logical and very uh, uh i use my logic and mind to understand but there's a huge heart energy in me believing mm, spiritually and emotionally about big foods as well so i am representing both sides and i'm just waving on the middle of the bridge for everyone to keep joining and continue listening. <laughs> ah, well, I really, I really like the the symbolism. I really like the metaphor you've used of uh, being in the middle of the bridge. That's a very, that's a great way of describing it. And you know, I also want to add that the name of this show, Type Four Seven One, actually means bridge to the other world. So <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So I is that is that the bridge in which uh, on which you stand in the middle? Yeah. So I guess we start talking telepathically, and your podcast become even deeper than before. We just uh, start connecting the dots much more, like sacred geometry, creating mandala right now, mandala of different forms and dimensions and energies and 
as long as we both feel good on both sides of the phone, it's amazing. Right. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, since you mentioned Bigfoot, since you mentioned Sasquatch, why don't we start creating that spoke of the wheel that we're that we're creating right now. Let's let's talk about Sasquatch and flesh out your thoughts on this particular phenomenon. Yes, of course. Like you said, you're standing in the middle of the of the bridge. Like uh, it, it's it's something that could be, could not be. Uh, it's something that you don't have direct experience with. But I'd I'd like to know where you stand on things so far in a more specific way when it comes to the Sasquatch. Mm, thank you. That's very interesting. Yes, I do stand on the middle of the bridge, but in a way, I actually, I am that bridge. I am that bridge. There is no struggle for me to understand if uh, Bigfoot is exist or we not exist. There is no even question about. There is no choice for me to make. So I am that all experience. And Remember, looking back now, every time when I do fire ceremony, and I'm usually very high, naturally, without any substances, but during the fire, with the uh, shamanic practices, with the drum, I go to this alternative state of mind. And I always use my voice, and I say, there is a Bigfoot here, way all around us, standing and looking, supporting, or just curious, constantly especially of the fire in the forest in this wildness we come as close as we allow themselves to come and i feel their presence and i always say gratitude words of gratitude for them to come and join in the circle and this been done way before i meet you so i think the way you come to my life in a way it's part of the big food messages, telepathic messages, because we will maybe not show up right by the bush and say, hey, I'm big food, what's up? We will, we, I see them way more complex being, and we might educate us human way more gently, telepathically, through the connecting people, through the open up some, some visuals, subtle visuals, subtle ideas in the mind, especially their presence very strong in the caves by the fire ceremonies and in the forest in the deep forest you know i wanted to point out that before i was aware of your property before i was aware of the mandala or you or anything about your business i felt very strongly that the location of your business is actually a- a- an important spot for the Sasquatch. Um, and, and that's actually how I came to meet you because I was actually checking things out in that area because of uh, Sasquatch reports that I'm familiar with uh, that have occurred right in that area. And uh, I, it, seems, it seems that there's something important that happens in that area, uh, perhaps at certain times of year, pertaining to the Sasquatch. And things that are happening lately are also supporting this hypothesis of mine. Now, it's just a hypothesis. I it's uh it's it's highly speculative at, at this point, but things are absolutely supporting this hypothesis of mine. But long story short, there is mm-hmm. Sasquatch activity in that area. I suspected it before I knew anything about it, and then I came to know about reports, and then sure enough, there have actually been Sasquatch sightings on your property. Now, these these sightings were of, of someone else's experience. It wasn't either you or myself, so we, we won't talk about that too much. But I do want to point out that Sasquatches have been sighted on your property. And it is a, a, a place of, I feel, very important significance when it comes to Sasquatch behavior and, uh, and movement at certain times of year. So it's a it's a really interesting spot. It's a really interesting. It, it's yeah. just it, there's just a lot that's interesting going on right there. Now you mentioned your your fire ceremonies. I want to know more about your ceremonies 
and your process and the altered state of consciousness into which you slip when you're when you're participating in these ceremonies. That's something I'm always very interested in accessing altered states of consciousness, particularly without the use of substances. I, for one, Mm -hmm. am not really one for using substances to access consciousness. And and you've mentioned altered states of consciousness without the use of substances. And I totally approve of that. So I want to I want to hear more about that, please. Yes, many people who come to my presence, they all would like to have some better spiritual experiences. That's why we come to Mao Shasta. And often the first question is about substances or some type of uh, plants uh, and pan- pine cones and kind of joking pine cones. But I not, again, I'm still the bridge. I'm on the, se- on the middle of everything. I am both. The way I present uh, my work and by using some tools as um, your own body, your own heart, plus the elements as a fire, plus the elements of the frequency from the drum, shamanic drum. This is already more than enough. With the right practitioner, right, strong, determined, obsidian, sharp practitioner person, it's naturally easy to go to that state halfway you either awake but you're not fully sleep or you sleep you're not fully awake either or that way everything come um, possible everything what in the mind it's makes sense including visitors who circle around by the fire including the spirits inside the fire many people in my fight ceremonies witness the faces of man real very strong face in smoking pipes or not smoking pipes there's different scenarios so that mystical things it's always a cure when you open for that mm-hmm. yes did i answer somehow your question Oh, yes, you did. And I I really liked what you pointed out, Uh, you know, rhythmic movement, rhythmic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, movement, rhythmic movement, uh, rhythmic sound, uh, pure body, not like be raw as who you are, like start raw with whatever you experience, you experience good, you don't feel good. It just doesn't really matter. Keep start where you are. And I will take you there. I'm if this is the quality of the guide subconsciously or consciously take you whatever you need and this is of course personal choice no one will push anyone unless you make a decision for yourself ah i like it inside inside yes I'm starting to see more about what you mean by you're standing in the middle of the bridge. You're you're <laughs> yes. You're you're right there in the middle. You're you're kind of the facilitator, right? Uh, you 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 you're, you're you're kind of right there in the middle and and it, the, the bridge goes that way and it also goes that way. And there's Olga right there in the middle and and you're you're just kind of facilitating the the passage, are you not? Yes, you exactly describe um my way correctly the bridge it's very funny fact i think it will be fun to share i born on the bridge between uh, most longest night and shortest day it's a winter solstice 22nd of december 22nd 12th so it's already in my blood to be that balance between uh between elements between the lights and darks and shadows and enlightenment without judgment without limitation and as i say i am that bridge in same time ah. <laughs> and we all are this is the part of the conversation maybe for another time like we like people say i am that i am i am what what does that mean that's mean we including all the possibilities were presented for us here on Earth. And you know what? I also want to point out, I am also a December baby, Olga. <laughs> Congratulations, Capricorn or Sagittarius? Sagittarius. On, 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 at your end of the month, are you a Capricorn? 
it's a it's a both Sagittarius and the Capricorn. It's a change in day when they change the sign. Right, and you're right there on the on the winter solstice. Yes, exactly. This sh- longest night, darkest longest night, and the hope for the light, for the sunshine, for the days become longer from that day forward. The darkest night. That's well. The, the midnight is where the day begins. I mean, when it get when it's at its darkest, that's where <laughs> it starts to become light. And uh, yes, we, as we were talking about. Um, rhythmic movement and and rhythmic sound dance uh y- you know people have been using these methods to induce altered states of consciousness since the beginning i mean the, since time immemorial humankind has used these methods to bring about altered states of consciousness and these are the most natural ways to achieve that uh, it, these are among the most natural ways to achieve that it's built right into the human body to do this to use these natural methods to access consciousness. I just want to point out, it's not necessary to ingest psilocybin or DMT, ayahuasca, mushrooms. It's not necessary to ingest these things to achieve enlightenment. I, that's not to say that I don't have reverence or respect for the use of plants in their proper place. I know that that there are, you know, very old traditions that, that, that do utilize these things. And I find them fascinating and I, and I find them, I have a, I have respect and reverence for them. And they, they offer, these traditions offer a great deal to us, but at the same time, it is not necessary to rely upon these things to, uh, to access higher consciousness or altered states of consciousness. Uh, th- these methods are built right into the human body. And we, we do that via rhythmic movement, uh, dance, song, and, and these things have the, have the effect of kind of loosening, because see, you're, you're, you're kind of occupying your ego when you do this, aren't you? And, and, and so when you occupy your ego in that way, you, you're, you're kind of freeing your consciousness. You're kind of creating your own sensory deprivation chamber that frees your consciousness in, the, in these times. Would, would you agree with that? Yes, in a way, use everything correct and true. We think, um, maybe it will be strange to hear, we think we need something for something. We think we need food in order to like uh, take a bit physical life. We think we need something like water to uh, feel some goodness in the body. But in a way, we actually have everything is inside mm-hmm. already. That's true. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And you you mentioned this altered state of consciousness as being somewhat like being half awake and half asleep. And I absolutely identify with that. My my whole life, I've been kind of developing for myself these ways of kind of uh, at will entering mm-hmm. into altered states of consciousness. And I, I enter a state that that is that feels very much like what you've described for the purpose of kind of uh well, perceiving things differently and, and just and yes. kind of, yeah. So in those moments, uh, what happens to your perception? I know you say that, that people have seen faces in the fire, a man smoking a pipe. What has happened to you in these altered states? How, how do you feel? How do you perceive things in these altered states? I feel amazing. I feel myself in that we one okay on that side of the bridge where we are right now for example we if we think oh once we go to that state we will think that way or we will feel that way but once you in that state there is no more like thinking or feeling logically it's mm, almost hard to describe it in a way what is that it feels like normal it feels home you feel good you feel happy you feel everything is possible you feel safe you feel yourself you control everything you can control everything it feels amazing feels good and powerful and 707 right now so it means what i say is correct 707 yes <laughs> <laughs> it's actually 709 olga according okay. to my <laughs> 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 okay, let me drink some magwort, what I am doing right now while I'm speaking with you. I'm drinking some lucid, uh, lucid drink uh, tea, but um, kind of teasing you and joking me. But yes, I drink magwort uh, right now 
it's also it's a very gentle uh, relaxed tea what help also elevate physical body it's wonderful i definitely recommend everyone to look into the mugwort to start with and look at the trees you have around yourself what plants you have around yourself the tree the 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 shaman says look around your house and see what plants and trees you have growing right next to your house doesn't matter if you have house or apartment that's mean you need that plants for your health everything already for you available oh you have dandelions most likely your body needs dandelions you have a birch tree white and beautiful most likely you can get some medicine from the birch tree so whatever you have around it's exactly what you needed ah that's an interesting perspective uh, it's it, very very ancient very very ancient perspective yeah it kind of it, it says to me that wherever you are you are where you are meant to be and your environment uh, in, supports uh, you right yeah and your environment reinforces this and and shows you this and is and makes available what is necessary for you that's that's i can absolutely see how that's an ancient idea i just hadn't thought of it in exactly that way before I or like if that. you look some yes when you maybe walk around next time your house like maybe you can find oh there is a nettle growing like a couple meters away or some mugwort or something growing the grass like research and maybe that's what your body needed right now that's your organs it's a very strong connection with the mother earth mother earth start growing the things around you what you need it's the best medicine mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well i i also think we should point out though that people should exercise caution and not just start ingesting plants willy-nilly i mean they should know what they're doing first should they not Yes, I mentioned very clear research, research. Right. Yes. Very good. Yes, you did say that. So you've you've done a lot of you do a lot of wandering around out out in the natural areas around Mount Shasta. I want to hear more about your experiences and your insights and what has come to you when uh, when you when you travel out in nature. OK, that's maybe one of my favorite parts. <laughs> how, ama how amazing that just just to talk about it's already make my heart singing well that is definitely my favorite part of live and be uh, to be on the nature by myself far away and just connect with with everything with with the mother earth with the sky with the trees mm. and uh, it's never boring. I can sit with one rock or one tree for many hours just to look for. There is so much to see around, so much to reflect around. Have you ever encountered what you would feel like uh, is maybe a other entities or beings that are not necessarily physical entities or beings out in the woods with you? Yes, I always, in a way, been always protected. I always felt extreme protection. But actually, how we start our talk, I mentioned about my belief and my personal understanding about metaphysical, telepathic, uh, energetic, um, electric connection between the entities, physical entities in the forest and someone else in the forest. And we actually have ability to really scan. We think we can see them, but we already been seen way before we even think someone watched to us. In a way, it's uh, so we been already uh, observed from the beginning. If we on the wildness, and if the energy is not right or person have not good intention, we most likely will be run away from the forest. In in my experience. I put myself to the situation where I, I experienced that mm, I went to the place called Cave Junction, Cave Junction, the wildness, and I already knew it. By just driving through that area, I feel like goosebumps on my skin, like a fear, strange fear. And I gently and sincerely went to the area and spent time in the forest briefing through the fear and just uh, looking constantly 360 degrees keep looking keep looking keep looking and just um feel that feel whatever i've been presented in a way without 
run, you know, judgment, but it was quiet experience. There was uh, caves there, many caves, and people buy tickets to go inside the caves, but I am not tourist. So instead of I sit on top in the forest, on top of the caves and have that electric magnetic experience of the fear. Mm -hmm. Is this makes sense what I'm talking about? Yes, it does. And I really like that. It, you, you're talking about experiencing the fear instead of trying to get rid of it, right? Yes, it's like fear and curiosity at the same time. It's a very strange, once we become sensitive to everything, that's easy to understand how your body re reacting on different places in the forest. I train myself so I can almost like, I'm not giving myself like a credit, I'm amazing, but in a way, in the most innocent way, I can say, yes, I can see the animal before they see me. I can, I am so in tune and so quiet. So sometimes I see the animal first before they see me. So anyway, how we can, is this uh, helping to answer your question about Bigfoot, if you're asking about them? Well, I'm, I, I wasn't asking specifically about Bigfoot uh -huh, or okay. specifically about any one thing or another. Uh, just just your own personal experience is all I'm asking about. And and I find it very interesting when you speak about experiencing fear. And I, and fear, I that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And I really like what you've had to say about it. Now, when you had this experience with fear, first of all, uh, you described the caves, you described the forest. What time of day was it? What time of day or night, I should say? It's a daytime. It's definitely after, like afternoon, when the light gets softer, when is the wind is slowed down, something starts shifting in the environment. Something, especially if I separated myself slightly off path and just almost like I really want to run away from that. I just want to run away. That's the message, okay? go away kind of like that so i was just gently allowed that be for a moment i did not stay overnight that place <laughs> that's good it was already good good enough good yeah i like that and um you know and, and it, as it pertains to bigfoot research actually i have had others say to me the importance of confronting fear in this in this endeavor Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so so going out into the woods and confronting fear is actually a big part of all of this, whether it has to do with Sasquatch research or, you know, something else entirely. The thing they have in common is, of course, being out in an, in, in the woods and in an environment that is not your own and being somewhat vulnerable. Yes, yes. I just remember uh, what I do also, I in this places like that, I open my voice, I introduce myself, I tell where I come from, what is my intention, what I'm going to do or what I'm going not to do. Like I say, I will not take anything from here. I am the child of the forest. I am your daughter. Please allow me to be here. Please don't make me fear, don't, like, don't scare me, please. Help me to understand about yourself. Like I'm all going from the mountain. I'm just here to remember myself. And suddenly everything released back. So I definitely encourage this practice to come and introduce yourself. Bring couple gifts. Even it look funky, like it, like what's going on? Like what Olga doing this, giving some tobacco or some beans to the trees? Who need it? Birds might be eaten, but this we see everything. We once you introduce yourself and treat with respect, it's infinitely protected, infinitely respected, and we will most likely shower in you with the gifts of the good, beautiful dream when you sleep at night, and will protect you and give you some beautiful uh, messages telepathically. That's how I see it. Ah, I like that very much. I I do something similar when I go out into the woods. I, you know, announce my presence. I say that I'm a friend, that um I I am I am 
opening myself to peaceful interaction. Is that uh, is that something is that something like what you do? Yes, you see how far we went from the fearful experience from some type of conventional, like, hey, let me just go and get something, get something for my logic. We went from the fear to this gentle, subtle merging with the environment, with the forest, with the wildness. Um, everything become very sweet after that. Right. As a matter of fact, I I had an, an experience along those lines last year. And as a matter of fact, I, I just spoke about this experience with my guest last week on this show. But I'll uh, <laughs> I'll get into it again just because it's relevant. Uh, I went to a place of mine. Uh, I couldn't go all the way to the, the top of the road because the top was still snowed in. But I drove as far as high as I could and I parked I parked uh right there on the road and I got out and I looked over the wilderness over the forest over this valley between the mountains and I opened myself to the, I was in, I was intentional I was going there specifically to interact with Sasquatch and so I opened myself inwardly to the Sasquatch and 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 just you know just quietly within myself said that I'm here I'm your friend I'm here to interact and the moment I did that I heard this very, very loud and very sharp whistle, and uh, and and then and and it was it was very much like a bird whistle, except it was very loud, like it was it was louder than a bird. And then after that initial whistle, there were all these whistles all around the valley that were answering, just dozens and dozens of whistles going all back and forth around this valley, just just these very loud, very sharp whistles that. Were, that that sounded like bird whistles, but they were much louder than bird whistles. So, it, it, so there is absolutely some reality in opening yourself to you know the experience when you're out in the woods and and the environment and and opening your, opening yourself peacefully to whomever or whatever you may interact with there. Yes, I think it's amazing what you described. And sometimes for logic, you think, oh, maybe it's birds, but there will be something in that sounds what will still make it actually it's not really birds or it's not really something. It's the, I see these entities, whoever live in the forest, not just like a four-legged or like a big furry animal, I see them as very advanced, uh, very gentle, very wise. And maybe we don't even have enough logic right now to really understand who we are fully in a way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. See, this is all about finding out who we are because we don't know who we are. And uh, what's more, in, mm -hmm. yeah. in, the, in the Bigfoot community, there's this ongoing argument between two different ways of thinking uh one is is bigfoot just a flesh and blood creature and the other side is bigfoot is a paranormal being you know that is capable of all these you know all these uh things like uh, vanishing or you know teleportation or or what have you so but but i i think i think both of these sides are missing the point i think what it what it really is about is consciousness. Now, there are people on this planet who have been seen to be bathed in light and who can teleport themselves and levitate. But then there are also people who just are, you know, just regular people who, you know, don't really, you know, who, who, who don't embody these fantastical abilities. And likewise, the same is reflected in reports of, of Sasquatch encounters. Some Sasquatches are seen to uh, disappear at will or or teleport themselves or they're associated with strange lights, whereas other Sasquatches are observed to be just another living being. Now, people also mm. people also have throughout all human history, people have had mystical encounters with what we know to just, you know, to be ordinary animals like dolphins or, you know, uh, some particularly beautiful uh, rare animal. 
Now, people bears. have absolutely yes, bears are among those. So bears are you know what a lot of people would think of as just another mundane animal, but at the same time, people have mystical experiences with these things. So it's 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 not so much about whether a species is is well, yes. paranormal mm-hmm. or not. It's all all of it is about all of us accessing consciousness, and 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 when we do, then th- 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 perhaps we can experience these more elevated forms of experience, whatever the life form happens to be, whether it's human or Sasquatch or dolphin or bear or what have you. Does this make any sense? Yes. I just thought while you speak and I went to that, when have you seen the pixels and everything fall to the pixels Mm -hmm. and only left as consciousness. And then you put yourself back together to this physical form. So what you just, describe it's like a shamanic journey on its own right right and you know for that matter the Mm -hmm. shamanic tradition tells us these things i mean shamanic tradition is is very tuned into to the 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 specialness of these beings that that are that modern western civilization might just see as just another animal so i mean that that just supports this whole notion that it's really just all about consciousness and whether you know whether it's a bear or a dolphin or what have you you know we can all have these elevated experiences it's just a matter of our own consciousness allowing ourselves to experience that yeah yes and my dear uh, dear listeners the your spirit animal not in the uh, oracle or tar like a duck on the picture printed for you your spirit animal is in your consciousness is in your experience in the wildness. So get deeper, uh, release the fear, and uh, start tuning in step by step with everything what you have. Right. And using your consciousness exactly as Sam just mentioned. Now, I, I want to talk about your hip, your practices with hypnosis. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Olga? Yes, in a way, everything is very tied together. There is no separated activity in a way. It's always one way. It just can be different names. Maybe I can say everything tied together to find your own power, to really release the pain, the fears, the either people's voices, this voices from childhood, voices from the school. So step by step, it will be just only one voice and it's only your voice. And when you have that voice, you can hear everything around you and you can speak with anyone and anything, not just the animals, but all everything with the table, with the car, with the moon. <laughs> that's right. So it's it's um, hypnosis. That's what hypnosis help. And that's what I enjoy to help through this practice because hypnosis first helped me and then I like turn upside down the tool and become that. Absolutely. I like that. Well, Olga, we are at the bottom of this episode. In the last few minutes, is there anything that you would like to share with us that we haven't discussed so far? I think uh, I say said everything. But there is a certain energetic frequencies in embedded through this conversation. Being where I am right now in this powerful vortex and speaking directly, looking to the candlelight. And I just recommend to come back again to this episode and maybe listen again. There is something will be triggered in you, in the listener. There is some way like, ah, I get it like a session after the healing session you get it so i definitely recommend to come back to this episode and see what is there else on this subconscious level (laughs) i'm very serious yeah no i i totally am right there with you uh there are layers to be uncovered and and it may take more than one listen to un, to fully uncover the layers in what we've discussed yes this episode is one of the kind and unique and you will get very good uh, you will get not you but you 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 will definitely if you listening before you like on the evening you will definitely have a amazing dreams tonight 
there is no choice. Amazing, beautiful dreams. Oh, great. I look forward to that then. And I'm sure everyone else does. You, as you, well. you, yes, you, 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 and you, and you, and you too. And you know what? I'm myself going to have amazing dreams tonight. Right, right. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll have to compare notes uh, about about the dreams that we each have tonight. And you know what? I want to point out that I'm going to join you on a broadcast on Instagram very soon, correct? Yes, we're going to meet on this three-dimensional metaphysical reality very soon. Right. Excellent. Well, I look forward to that. And uh, it's been Quite, quite a privilege speaking with you, Olga. Like I said, I very much enjoy your insights and the thoughtfulness that you put into all of this. There is quite a depth to to what you do and to the things you say, and I find it very re- refreshing. So I've I've had quite a good time speaking with you today. I really appreciate you joining me on Type Four Seven One today, Olga. And let it be so. And I just wanted to say one more time, Olga's website is galactictraveler.space. Yes, and uh huh, and I will add it's with two L, Galactic Traveler with two L, very much unconventional. Right, right. And how do we find you on Instagram? Galactic Traveler dot space. How you find me on Google? Same, Galactic Traveler dot space. All right, sounds good. Well, Olga, I will speak. I will be speaking with you again soon. Until then, thank you so much for joining me this evening on Type Four Seven One. Спасибо большое и до свидания. Thank you very much and goodbye. If you would like to be privy to the reckoning in consciousness that is Type 471, go immediately to your preferred podcast platform and follow the show. Rate Type 471. Give it as many or as few stars as you believe it deserves. Say your piece in the comments. And share Type 471 with other people, like-minded people. People like you who can hear in my voice that I am deadly serious about delivering wondrous truths to you. So if you believe in what I'm attempting to do, make sure everybody knows just how you feel about Type 471. Finally, to share your own extraordinary experiences with me, email me at type471podcast at gmail.com. I'm Sam Kitchen. Thanks for listening to Type 471. Northern California and Southern Oregon's preferred provider of homegrown unknown. You be well, dear listener. I will speak to you next week.